Hey, this is Deanna with Stitches Quilting, and I know this is a really silly thing to do, but I am working on a project called Zoe the Zombie, and you can see what she looks like. She's a really cute little Halloween zombie doll, and she was designed by Emily Taylor Designs, and I think there's a lot of times that we're stitching and we're sewing, and we think, hey, maybe we could just use a Sharpie marker to make that face and to make that expression on something that we're stitching or we're sewing. And we just don't quite know how to do it. I wanted to go ahead and show you how easy and how incredibly simple it is to go ahead and take something like this design and to make it on your sewing machine. And it, it's just gonna look so darling. So thank you for all the hearts and thank you for joining and thank you for um, doing all of these things. I would love to do more um, th uh, things about how to embroider and using your sewing machine and those types of things. But um, so we're gonna go ahead and, and, and start with that. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm working on. I didn't wanna start out with this picture because it looks a little scary. Emily Taylor has designed a line of fabric. Her original line of fabric was the zombie apocalypse that she did for 2014. And it's absolutely beautiful. It's got great things on there. Her artwork is so darling of the zombies and things on it. But this year she has a new line and the new line, oops, I'm sorry. I hit the, the new line is actually called zombie love. And you guys can go ahead and share this with people. I promise it will be very helpful to your friends um, or maybe those people that sew or, or things like that. But this, this fabric collection of Zombie Love is absolutely darling. It has these little ladies and things like that. The pattern that I'm using, let me show you back to this little pattern right here, is Rosie the Zombie. And this is a separate pattern. And you can see she was made with the zombie apocalypse fabrics but right now we're gonna go ahead and I've dressed her and made fabrics for her for the zombie love collection so what I have here is the the body part of zombie of Zoe and Zoe has some artwork that is done on her face I used a here is the pattern that we used so here was a train, the actual pattern that came from the, the pattern that Emily Taylor did. And you can see she's got some very vibrant and striking eyes there. And it would be very easy to go ahead and Sharpie marker that on this gray fabric. But I really think that the effort that I put in here worked out great in terms of of doing this on the fabric and the way it looks and this is her little neck as if it's been stitched together and to tell you the truth for Halloween this is a perfect project to learn how to do this and to experiment with your sewing machine and with different stitches and things like that so the first thing that we did which I don't know if you guys have ever done I'm sure you have but I wanted to show you a really quick way to go ahead and transfer this project to the, the fabric itself. This is an old frame and I am going to put the pattern piece of Zoe underneath this glass right here. I'm sorry, this is a little awkward, but I'm gonna put it under like this. And then I'm gonna slide it here on my sewing machine so it can stay there for a moment. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I went ahead and transferred her image on this. Um, I went ahead and I have this little device called a LED light. And it's a, a, a type of light, you can see it's as big as my finger, it's thinner than my finger. I got this at the hardware store. It's an LED lamp, but it's in the shape of just, you know, a small, thin type device. It doesn't get hot. It doesn't do anything. There's a small clicker that you can click on that turns the lamp on and off. I'm going to put this underneath the glass, and then that way we can actually see the design 
that, and I'm going to show you this a little bit over here, but you can see the design through the fabric. Let me lift this up a different way. You can see the design through the fabric. Uh, let me move this over a little bit more. I'm trying not to move my camera very much. Ah, I'm sorry. Hold on for one second. This is awkward to hold up. But you can see the design with this small light box. Let me get this light so it's behind everything. So you can see it a little bit better. There we go. But you can see right there. Oh, I apologize, you guys. Um, you can see it right there, and then you can transfer that image with a Mark Be Gone pen that will just disappear and erase. And right here is where her that eye is. And if you slide that, you know, light around, you can get it. So I'm going to put this down and let's get to stitching because that's the most important part. But that's generally how you do that. You could also take, say, for example, a light a lamp that you have and put an old picture frame on top of it, the glass part, and just do it that way. I am going to start stitching here and to stitch, I am going to, to change my machine. Well, let's go ahead and just do a regular straight stitch for right now. I'm going to, and let, to give it some different variety of stitches. So let's go ahead and stitch right along here on this blue line. This blue line will erase. I'm going to take that off and cut that thread. But you can see that's just a basic little stitch right there. And instead of a Sharpie marker, you can see there's a line. And really, it's, it's very simple to go ahead and do this. Now, let's go ahead and switch to a basic satin stitch. I want to show you that I do have a um, a tear away stabilizer. This is a stabilizer that tears away. This is something you're definitely going to want to get right away if you're actually going to be doing some embroidering. One thing that's so discouraging is when you're working on a project and the needle buries all the thread right through the, the fabric. So it's, it's not very fun. So it's good to have a stabilizer behind that. Um, let's go ahead and experiment with some of our stitches on our sewing machine and I'm going to pull up the applique stitch or just a basic satin stitch and I'm going to start here close to the bottom of her eye and I'm going to go ahead and just stitch around and I'm going to go faster because I don't need this stitch to look very regular. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That's one thing I really like. Oh, I'm sorry, that is vibrating like crazy. Let's take that off. That's one thing I really like about a Halloween project is stitching on the faces when you don't need to worry about what the face is going to look like. So I'm just turning this around and around in a circle. Let me go ahead and pull her up a little bit more. And there we go. Trim that off. And let me show you that. So I've got just that basic eye and doesn't it look zombie-ish? I didn't try to make it perfect or anything like that. So um, I need that pattern and the fabric. <laughs> um, now, how fun. You know what? This is a great, this is, um, Emily Taylor is a fabric designer through Riley Blake. And, um, and I have all of this fabric available on my quilt store. It's an online website, which I, I don't have an actual store, brick and mortar store anymore. So if you want to order it online, you can. I have it um, built in as a kit. And I haven't uploaded this particular pattern, but this doll, she's at least, she's probably about two, she's about three feet tall, maybe even longer than that. Um, when you add her feet and everything else, I mean, she's just absolutely darling. So let's go ahead and just do another little line of ac accentuating this. I just want to show you once again that I'm holding this 
camera and the tripod so it doesn't vibrate from my machine. But once again, I just put a little accent mark underneath her eye. Um, this fabric that I'm working with is a Riley Blake gray, um, and it's more of like a marbled shade, shade, and it's actually a shade um, instead of a solid fabric, which I kind of liked for the zombie look. And this is all of her skin that's right here. So let's go ahead and bring this over. I'm doing her lower eyelashes. It's just so simple, you guys. I mean, it really is. Um, but you can, let me take this off and you can see. I mean, what we're doing is such simple work, but by having the stabilizer behind that, um, it actually looks good and it looks right and see how even I mean I know my my stitches aren't even in terms of they're all squiggly and they're all over the place but you can see how even the stitching is with the fabric I'm not digging into the fabric or anything like that so the stabilizer behind it works really well I did use an embroidery thread on this it's a shinier embroidery thread and um, I can show you what one of mine look like this is a yellow shade and I have several different shades that I set aside for this project that I pulled out of my little stash um, let's go ahead and get a few more of these eyelashes on here I hate to keep doing this and just making you guys watch these little eyelashes but you can see just how oh I switched to a the regular stitch let's go ahead and take a look at that so you can see right here, I did a regular stitch. Um, sorry, um, right there is a regular stitch instead of the satin stitch. And you can see it definitely makes a difference to have the satin stitch on there. And we're, we're not finishing the end of the stitch. This is a Halloween project. It's a zombie of all things. So we don't need to actually try to finish and make the ends of the satin stitch look pretty or anything like that. We're just giving it that hard edge and something that's a little bit more, I, I don't know, just more zombie-ish. So let's go ahead and cut that thread. I'm going to do one more. No, I think there's two more eyelashes down here. Let's go ahead and trim that off. And I've got one more right here. And I'm not going identical to the actual eyes themselves. Um, this, this marker fades away. And so I'm just marking it. So be brave and just go ahead and, and get out your sewing machine. And instead of a Sharpie marker on a project like this, you know, instead of adding little Sharpie marker eyeballs or Sharpie marker whatever, I mean, get brave and just experiment. And I know sometimes you work on a project for a while, but you could actually do this type of work first and then work on stitching all of the clothing and those types of things um, or the other pieces of it. But start with the face. Um, you might be surprised with yourself. You would, might actually do a better job than you can imagine. And your first little try will be the best. And also, don't be a perfectionist. I just went to a live class by Kay Facet, and he said, don't, nothing makes him more painful than to watch people unstitch things. So just go with what you have and just make it good. And the one trick to all of that is just be consistently inconsistent. Don't try to be just so perfect that your projects just have to be that way. Try to just go for the consistent, inconsistent look. And it looks great. I mean, this is darling, and I've just been consistently inconsistent. Let me get the other little um, heart for that eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this real fast, and I'm gonna lay it on top of there. And then, oh, thank you. Yeah, consistent, consistently inconsistent. 
So let me see here. That's Danielle. Danielle, I agree with you. I I also long arm and I don't know about you if, if you have a long arm or quilt or anything like that, but I really believe in my quilting that I don't need to have things be perfect. In, in fact, I don't think any quilt is ever perfect. If you look at old quilts that are hanging in museums, um, in fact, Kafe Facet, Facet did a new book on museums, on quilts that were in museums that were just heirlooms. And none of those quilts are perfect, but they're hanging in museums right now. So let's go ahead and put this little eye on here. And those women, you know, they didn't have perfect ways of doing things, but it's what we leave behind for people and that we love people enough to do something like this. I'm going to just go ahead and stitch this heart on and I'm not trying to be perfect and go just exactly around the needle. I've got a little bit more thread on there than I'd like around my foot. Um, so we'll see what happens, but I'm going to go ahead and just stitch this around. I'm not going to worry about if I go completely right a quarter inch or something from the edge of this heart, because once again, it's a project that is a zombie. And we're just trying to adhere these cute little hearts that are consistent with the zombie love collection. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I will show you what everything looks like once we trim all of these threads too. We got a lot of loose threads hanging around. But let's go ahead and now do the zigzag stitch, which is consistent with her other eye, where we did a zigzag stitch around the, the pink eyeshadow. Oh, you want to see my foot? Okay. The foot I have is just a basic um, B foot. And let me take it off. Um, I'm, this is all I'm using for for this and yes it does have an open toe oops oh my gosh I just dropped it now when I do some real free motion um, quilting I actually have uh, the feed dogs are up I mean they're up because it, and I don't have my feed dogs down for this but when I um, stipple or when I do some other type of embroidery work I do put my feed dogs down um, and there are different times when I put my feed dogs up, my feed dogs down. I also have a, a another type of foot that's more of like a little tiny circle that is open, but this one is not something that I feel like I need that foot on there because these the stitches I'm using are actually just basic stitches um, for that. So, but I, I will I will definitely do a segment. Um, go ahead and follow me, and I will do a segment to show you how to, to do that um, and to how to free motion quilt with the feed dogs down or to free motion um, embroider and do some things with the feed dogs that are actually down. Let's get to this zigzag stitch. So there's some people that have joined us. This is a zombie um type of of project that we're working on i wanted to show you guys how to do this because so often we're when we work on things let me go ahead and show you again we're working on this project that's called rosie the zombie and it's by emily taylor designs and sometimes we make something like this this doll is literally like three feet tall and it's not much fabric the gray fabric is the most but um, you actually can use just a fat quarter pack of the other fabrics to make this doll work and to execute it, execute the pattern. But what is really wonderful is instead of doing something like this and then making a Sharpie marker face or eye or things like that, we're using um, the sewing machine. And it, you really can use it and it's, it's not gonna go wrong. And especially with a Halloween project where things don't have to be perfect or precise. I'm going to, oops, I put on a, I guess I can show you if you want to, but um, on my machine, I know you have a zigzag stitch. If you ever wanted me to help you figure out your machines, I definitely help people do that. I feel bad 
when people have sewing machines and they don't actually know how to use it. I'm going to do a little bit smaller of a zigzag around here on this. And once again, this one, I'm not doing as much of the embroidery work as I am doing just some detail. I have got my needle in a needle down position, but I'm going to bring this around. And when you have your needle where it can go either needle up or needle down, or at least you, you turn your, your side wheel so it can be in a needle down position, and then you bring that around and you pivot your machine without going off stitch. So there we go. So I really think she's, her face is kind of done. We've got the two eyes right here. We've got the eyebrow. We have her neckline as if she's been rather stitched together, her little lips. And let me grab, take this off of the tripod for you. And let me show you some more of the pieces of her that I've constructed. Um, let me also show you, hold on, let me detach her from the sewing machine. There we go. Oop, she's on the floor. <laughs> and let me get this pattern. And let me bring you over here to my workspace. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you, um, here is her pattern right here, and she's big. Um, you can see my arm here. I mean, my arm. Well, hold on. I have a ruler right here underneath these different layers. Her body is, um, gosh, that's 24 inches just in her body height. So then her legs are this long right here. And this is, again, where instead of using a Sharpie marker, I actually just stitched. And you can see here, I did lots of different stitches from just regular basic stitches along to satin stitches. This is a cross hatching where you're going one direction and then you come another direction. It, very, very simple. But this is her leg that's sewn in a tubular fashion. So if we put this like here, um, they just make a little tube. So, and then she's got like a little zombie portion to that but you can see the leg is is 18 inches so we've got 18 inches plus 24 that's three and a half feet tall if we had her from you know the whole way tall but let me show you some other pieces of her clothing that i've put together um her arms are also put together in a in a a fashion like this and actually she's going to quilt market because this is um, going to be for Emily Taylor to go to quilt market and to be there sitting there so that she can um, show her zombie love fabric in this new in this in the new fabric with this older pattern but um, you can see with this all we do is we fold this this is her arm we leave this open right here, but we're going to just stitch this closed right along here. Here I attach, so the arm piece of the gray is all one piece. And then I overlaid a sleeve on top of there. I left a raw edge right here. You can see that's just a raw edge. And then I used a heart stitch. I mean, when do we ever use these stitches on our sewing machine? We just don't. And it's fun to experiment with them. And since it's the zombie love, and here's this zombie giving his heart to this zombie, you know, I thought some little hearts would be good. This is her skirt right here. So we have her skirt. Um, I used the orange fabric right here, and it's got little skeleton hands, and then little pink hearts that are within the skeleton hands. So that's her skirt. This is the front piece to her shirt and I used a bias um, I made a bias tape with this fabric over here and all of this is going to be a tutorial and instructions on my website for you on how I, I can't I can't give you the pattern you can purchase the pattern because I really respect Emily Taylor but so the pattern dimensions and those types of things aren't on there, but how to construct the pattern, all of this will be a tutorial that will be on my website from the instructions to everything else. So on here, this is the basic body, and you can see um, 
that's what her body looks like that's what you cut out but as you put her together this is one piece of her top and then here's another piece and both of these come from the zombie collection this is her arm that will be folded and will come out here and then I then this is her little skirt right here and uh, and it's got a little pleat in it this is the back of her skirt Emily Taylor had you line the fabric of her skirt so we did right sides together and then we put a bias tape on this open top so you can see it's a right side together and then um, over here this is another arm that matches this fabric so her arms are not matching which is really fun it gives it more of a zombier look once again I did that heart stitching right here I did the heart stitching up here and um, she's gonna look great so all she needs is her hair um, added and I want to show you on here that when you do this all you do is you tear away and you rip off this the you just rip it off so that your stabilizer just comes right off so you want a tear away stabilizer and that's how that works okay so there will be instructions with all of these things on the website the pattern will be on the website and all of the information will be on the website for her but she is absolutely darling but this is definitely a way that you can go ahead and add that extra detail to things um, without pulling out a sharpie marker for it to happen so you can see that looks if we're on a leg pretty zombie-ish so thank you so much for watching and if you're a replay follower thank you so much for watching too and remember my website is stitchesquilting.com there will be full tutorials and those types of things on the blog for this particular item thank you so much we'll talk to you next time